Hi, this is Customizing Blythe Wig Making. So you've seen me look through my somewhat worrying box of hair. I've got a lot of different kinds of hair, different quantities of them as well. So I'm going to start by selecting some that I have enough of, I think, for making a wig for my Blythe. Usually the Blythes have hair sewn into the soft scalp on their head. This is something I've done before, but with this doll, I wanted to have her more interchangeable and I wanted to try out making changeable wigs for her because it's something I hadn't really seen a lot of. It's, it's not as common as just having a scalp, which you could change out, absolutely. The scalp, I suppose, is like a wig in itself. I wanted to try making one or two wigs so that I could change her look um, when I change her outfit. There's a lot of different places you can find synthetic hair or real hair. I have bought wigs and I have taken all of the wefts off. Synthetic hair is often sold already in wefts and that's when the hair is essentially sewn into a long strip like this and with this it's great because you can manipulate the hair with hot water once it's sewn into a wig and if you have sewn it rather than glued it then the hot water isn't going to dissolve the glue. There could be, I suppose you could use hot glue and that's not going to melt, well it might melt in hot water but maybe I'll experiment. But yes, this is a weft of hair. So for this wig, I had, goodness knows when, I had taken off all of the wefts. So there's a fair amount of hair here and I might make, it's quite short, but I might make a, a wig out of this hair. I will certainly use the mesh fabric here to try out a sewn in, at least one sewn in wig cap with elastic around the brim so that it can just be slid onto the, to the doll's head. Another method that I'm going to try is a glued wig where I will cover the doll's head in plastic and tie a, uh, tie a rubber band around its neck to keep it all snug and I will stretch some fabric over the top of the head and paint on glue, let it dry and it will have dried in the shape of the head. I'll be able to trim off any excess then and start gluing on hair, having it glued in the direction that I want it to go. Um, of course this makes it a little less stylable um, but again you can glue on like buns or pleats as they are and you don't necessarily have to style these things afterwards like you would do with a sewn-in wig. Again here's some more synthetic hair that has come from a really old wig that I eventually just chopped the hair off of. So it's got some shorter hair and some longer. Again this could be used, I think that might be enough, maybe for a short haired wig, maybe. Natural fibre, you know, it could be sheep's wool, alpaca, llama, all sorts of animals that, uh, that you can buy some lovely wool from. I've got this bundle here of lovely creams of natural coloured, lovely long um, hair and it can be dyed, it can be straightened um, using hot water, using hair straighteners. I need to choose what I'm going to start with. The glue will take longest to dry so I'll probably start by covering the doll's head and gluing together a first wig cap. So here we go. As I already described, I'm covering the head with plastic to protect it from glue. I'm using Mod Podge, an old brush, scissors, and some muslin type fabric. It's actually part of a bandage. I start painting on the glue. 
You can do two or three coats. Make sure to let them dry in between. While waiting for the glue to dry, I've made some plans. I measured the head and made up a pattern for a cloth wig cap. Here's my test piece cut out of kitchen roll. Flat elastic sewn closed into a loop. Now I'm using a small back stitch to sew together the wig cap. This leaves it a little stretch that a running stitch wouldn't have. Now the glue is dry. I can trim down the glue cap with scissors. You could draw a line to cut along later while the cap is still on the head. Here's the fabric cap. I'll finish it by sewing on the elastic, just using a back stitch again. And here's the glued wig cap. I've cut it to be shaped around the ears and a bit lower at the back to help me tell the front from the back. I considered just using Mod Podge to glue on the hair, but with the pre-sewn wefts, it'll be nice and quick just to use hot glue. I start with a long back piece from ear to ear, making sure the natural curl of the hair is pointed inward. I fold the weft in half to find the middle. I stick it to the centre back of the head first with a dot of glue. Then I thinly spread the glue and press down the weft firmly from the centre outwards. The next weft extends above and past the ears on each side, not too close to the previous row. I could have done this all with one piece, but now I fill in the front, glued right along the front edge of the cap. Now she looks like Friar Tuck. I don't want any bald spots at the front of the head, so I angle the next row. It's pointed towards the front. Each row so far has the hair curved in the direction of the head. None of the hair is flicking out or sticking away from the head. This row is different. It's placed along the part line, but it's going to be folded back in on itself to hide the sewn edge. So the curve of the hair goes outwards for now. I place a short section here to fill in this open gap. Then I glue another section directly on top of the previous parting section. This helps to thicken out the area and it should curve with the natural direction as well. I curved the end of this piece around at the back to fan out the hair and make it look more natural. Now. Making sure the tip is clean of any glue, I use the heat from the tip of the gun, with no glue coming out, to press the part line back over itself. We repeat the same steps for the other side, gluing a strip for the parting right up to, but not on top of, the previous part. This hair is curved outward from the head again. Here I add elastic to keep the previous side separate while I work. I fill in the gap with a short piece and I glue on top of the parting weft another strip that curves with the head shape. I try to curve the back of this piece as well. And finally I use the tip of the glue gun to heat and press the part line down. Any squint bits can be pressed again. And I'm going to use mini straighteners to tame the few flyaways that I have here. Here's my first finished wig. A fairly rough but natural looking layered bob. It's day two now of the wig making process and I've got my fabric wig cap um, stretched over this glass because I plan to be sewing um, this natural fibre directly onto the wig cap and I didn't want the needle to be scraping against the, uh, the scalp or the, the upper face of the doll. So I'll be doing that um, once I've figured out what kind of style I'm going to try and make with that hair. And I'm also going to try something else. I saw some 
lovely video of how real wigs are made with individual knotted strands of hair. I don't know if I'll be doing something quite so precise, but I did want to try making a second sort of fabric wig cap using this tulle fabric in a purple to match this lovely synthetic hair. So we'll see if that amounts to anything, but that's what I'll be trying out today. So first I'm going to be cutting out and sewing together uh, a netting uh, sort of wig cap and we'll see how that goes. I'm going to try using a crochet hook to knot the individual clusters of hair into place. Here's my netted wig cap, all sewn up and I've sewn shirring elastic in a running stitch around the edge. Here's my first few tries of this technique. And here are the mini straighteners I mentioned before. It's good to know before you start whether or not you can use heat to add or remove curls or kinks. Here's the method I used at the start. Pulling a few strands from a looped bunch of hair, pulling the middle against the hook to form a little loop. Then I pull that loop through, hook the other side of the group strands and pull them through the loop. Then I pull on the knot to make sure it's tight. I'll show you this a few more times so it'll be nice and clear. I kept changing my method and I ended up with my doll in a clamp safely wrapped in fabric and knotting directly on her head. I had an issue with the wig cap becoming tighter and tighter as more hair was added. I removed the shirring elastic by snipping it and tweezing it out and sewed onto the edge an extra tube of tulle netting. This was simply a rectangle sewn closed, then stitched along the original elastic line, just using a back stitch. If you were to try this out, I would recommend making your netting wig cap larger and longer than you think you'll need, as the knots will gradually add bulk in all directions. Once I'd filled in all the cap with hair, I knotted more around the hairline to cover up the join of the new fabric piece and I knotted down towards the ears to mimic a natural hairline too. I simply trimmed the excess net from the front, careful not to cut any knots. I left the netting at the back, but you could perhaps add elastic back in at this point. Now for my final wig for this video. I've decided on the style, a side part and bun on the back with a pleat around it. I decide to lower the rear profile by adding a cupped shape in felt to the back of the wig cap. I cut a bun shape with scissors from some scrap foam. Then I needle felt the natural fibre to the bun, trying to keep the hair all directed the same way. I love this sound, kind of crunchy. I tuck the ends round to the back and felt them in. Next, I'm covering the felt part of the wig, starting on the inside, felting the hair to the edge, then I flip it round to cover the edge and I felt it into place on the other side. I repeat to cover all the back and I also roughly felted some ovals of hair and sewed them onto the sides of the cap. I folded them over to cover the elastic. I didn't felt these into the cloth because it doesn't hold as well as the felt would and I didn't want to damage the elastic with the barbed needle. The last technique I used on this wig was to felt one end of some hair and sew it onto the wig cap to create the part line, just the same as before with the glued wig. I sew along the felted side, then fold the hair back and felt the ends into the hair that was already sewn onto the cap. I just kept filling in the sides and top, bringing all the loose ends towards the centre back, which were then covered by the bun, which I just stitched onto the wig cap. 
and finished off with a pleat that was just poked in at the sides and felted roughly to the bun. Here are some finished shots of the wigs. Please let me know in the comments which one you liked best, what technique you might try yourself, and if you'd like to see another couple of different ways to make live wigs, and how to sew your own wefts. Thank you so much for watching. I enjoy reading all your comments, such as, Liam asked, what was the greatest moment in my life? Well, it has to be giving birth to my daughter Evie. She's an awesome little person and makes me so proud of her every day. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Bye.